good morning, good afternoon to all of you who are joining. Uh, we have a global audience today, so we're very excited. My name is Carson Robbins. I'm the VP of Business Development and Strategic Accounts here at Screening Eagle. And I am uh, joined by my colleague, Hussam, who is uh, who's going to be helping us uh, really talk about hello, everyone. our, excuse me? Uh, hello, everyone. Oh. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, but Hussam is our, uh, is our product manager for GPR and, uh, and uh, Profometer. Uh, tools and uh, we we look forward to doing this quick webinar uh, it's going to be about 30 to 40 minutes uh, it's really going to be going through different use cases and so forth but for those who don't know us uh, let me please uh, just introduce a uh, company so screening eagle our mission is to protect the built world screening eagle is actually an old company we are a little over 65 years old some of you know us under the brand name of prosec a number of years ago, ProSec and Dream Lab uh, merged and uh, Screening Eagle was started. You see the Swiss flag, we are a Swiss-based company, although we have uh, offices, two offices in the US, Pittsburgh and Austin, and we also have offices uh, throughout Asia. We're a little over 300 people with nine country offices, um, and we operate in over, over 100 countries. Now, uh, the Screening Eagle ecosystem is comprised of, in part, of uh, sensor tools. Uh, so sensors in the industrial space and the road space with our Zentner line, concrete, uh, which we're going to be talking about with the GT line, and others are geomatics or subsurface mapping tools and so forth. And the, the ecosystem is really underpinned by a strong software component. Uh, the software and the data where we make use uh, iPads and the computing power to increase the visualizations, help you with your workflows, to come up with new workflows, as well as being able to use uh, uh, seeing your results in 2D, 3D, and using artificial intelligence to really bring the richness of the data forward. And we have a track record of, of innovation. So we really started with, with our sensors where we really had I, IoT ready uh, devices. These are all wireless with really, really good data capture. We use the iPads, we're an iOS uh, first system where we use the software to really build these kind of intuitive, powerful interfaces to help you leverage not only 2D, 3D, but make sense of your data, leverage cloud computing, and being able to do uh, real-time capture of the data. We talk a lot about workflows, and what we mean here is this, this notion of digital data management that using the Screening Eagle uh, inspection tech tools, you're able to embark on new workflows where you can capture data at a distance, have it reviewed uh, at a separate location by experts, you can collaborate, and things like that that really create uh, more teamwork, uh, better collaboration, and faster outputs. And we are on a accelerated path also towards autonomous uh, autonomy uh, in the sense of being able to have these sensors be autonomous. Some of you may have seen our, um, our subsurface mapping tool being pulled by uh, the Boston Dynamics robot uh, spot. Uh, what we are doing here is looking for ways in which to increase the ways in which we can, we can facilitate the capture of uh, the data and help our end users create uh, richer data sets that give her deeper meaning. And to do that, we're really going to leverage AI. We're gonna leverage the computing power both in the cloud and on the devices so that all the work can be done either while you're in the field or in a distributed environment. And so with that, I'm gonna hand it over to some. Uh, there's gonna be a Q&A section on the back. Uh, really welcome to Screening Eagle's uh, presentation on, on GPs and profometers. You are now talking to one of the world experts uh, in this, uh, and we're excited for you to be with us on this non-destructive testing journey 
with us. Thank you. Thanks, Karsten. Uh, yes, yes. The context is is really. Um, I mean, we ha we have to look at that because you know today, uh, if you look at the history of the concrete and all those nice concrete structures, we've built so much, so many buildings, bridges, tunnels in the past. You know, from the 20th century, even in, at the end of 19th century, and of course in 21st century, and all those buildings, you know, those asset structures, they really need now to uh, to be inspected. Why? Why do we have those challenges? Unfortunately, first, uh, with the collapse of many, many, uh, um, you know, asset recently. I mean, we all know, you know, the Italian bridge, a very nice Italian bridge built in the 70s, and uh, the casualties uh, behind fatalities. Uh, we have many examples of bridges in U.S. Uh, and recently, the Miami Champlain, you know, towers, um, you know, the the cause was. Uh, um, likely to be the, the corrosion. So we have many, many issues today. Why? Because we have an aging infrastructures um, and also birth defects. And that's really um, making troubles today because you know the more time and the more accident uh, we will see in, in the future. So it requires uh, thorough inspections. And I think uh, you guys, you're all in the construction industry, uh, contractors, inspectors, engineers, uh, asset owners. Um, I think our awareness now is increasing. Um, we are all um, aware of that, but we need solutions for it. And that's why we are now presenting uh, the first webinar about uh, imaging, because imaging what's going on inside the, the concrete, that's really important. Just very, very uh, simple, you know, uh, thinking. Like the car, you know, you all have a car and I think you know uh, how much it, uh, it costs, you know, to have a car. Um, if you want an excellent condition in the beginning, it's fine, okay? When it's a new uh, building tunnel, so we have no problem. You know, the operation can run, it's fine. Repair cost is still, you know, acceptable. But when you start to go in the damage accumulation, it's really dropping, dropping exponentially. And conversely, you have, uh, the budget increasing. So that's really a problem. And um, even at this stage, we, we see many asset owners that don't really care. You know, they see the surface. Unfortunately, again, uh, sorry to remind you guys, Miami Champlain is an excellent, you know, uh, bad example. You know, people around hanging out and, and look, looking at the facade and the surface, rusty rebars, nobody cares. And one day, um, we lose uh, families, kids, uh, you know, uh, women and men, and we cannot accept that, you know, uh, until the fair. We must act, act here in the aging, you know, uh, phase. Why? Because it costs less. First, the inspection is not something really, it's a service that does not cost so much, and the repair behind will be um, with an acceptable cost. Here, an example of predictive maintenance, you know, uh, the corrosion was starting, some problem, and then you, you fix it. You don't have to rebuild the bridge. The bridge is not, you know, uh, did not collapse. You don't have operation stopping for a month. That's fine, that's cool, and we want that. Now, um, Karsten um, said that we, we are the leader, actually, in the non-destructive testing world. I think many of you uh, know Screen Eagle um, technologies, also Prosec, which was, and which is still the brand of the sensors. And this mix of software and sensors um, allow us to propose really a wide range of solution from the visual assessment to the rebar characterization through the compressive strength, uh, the corrosion issue, the thickness, the concrete uniformity, and of course, defect detection. Um, that's really important to have all those tools. Ideally, if you want really to be sure, you know, to limit uh, the chance to have problems on your asset, on construction, uh, structure, bridge, building, whatever, you need all those solutions. Today, we will focus on uh, the GPR technology and the AD current uh, for the imaging, what's going on inside the concrete in terms of reinforcement layout. You all know the concrete. And exactly like human body, you have several symptoms, okay? And um, 
when you go to hospital, we, we check you, you know, and we find some symptoms. But of course, similar symptoms can, you know, um, have different cause, different disease. But here we just focus on the symptoms because symptoms, it's really a good indicator, a good clue uh, that something wrong is going on. Um, so you have the surface crack, crack. I mean, everybody knows that, you know, uh, cracks, that's the visual first assessment. You have the rebar layout, you know, to make sure that uh, the layout is correct. You have the strength, compressive strength. You have the co correct concrete cover. That's the level of skin and the flesh that you have on for the durability or the protection of uh, the rebars uh, within the concrete. And you have, which is very difficult to detect, the internal defects. You know, you need to have the eyes of Superman uh, even more to to see uh, what's going on inside the concrete. And today we will focus on the rebar layout and the, con co the concrete cover. That's really two very good indicators of the health of the concrete. And imaging solutions are wonderful for that. Let's take you know, a very simple framework. OK, civil uh, engineer, contractors, you, you can say, OK, it's not perfect. It's not exactly reality, but we need that you know, to make it, uh, to make you understand. So let's take this really classic framework with top reinforcement, bottom reinforcement. Um, so you need to know the layout to make sure that you have top and bottom, you know, like a good skeleton, you know, homogeneous skeleton within the concrete. And you need also to know the, the cover. As I said, that's the level of protection of your uh, steel rebars. And, in some cases, you, know, you have many uh, retrofit project or you know, check in the, against an accident or new standard to make sure the diameter correspond to the right one. Checking that is very important actually uh, throughout the, the age, uh, the life of the asset. So it can be during the construction phase, you know, the, in terms of quality control. Um, you know, you cannot rely on the, the eyes of the the control guy, you know, okay, the layout is good. First, you will never check everything. So you, you, it's possible that you get back to a piece of concrete and when it's casted, it's too late, you know, to look at visually directly. So you need those solutions as well to image. Um, very important, we didn't talk about it so much, but you can also with imaging solutions uh, to visualize um, all those PT ducts, which are really used in offices uh, office buildings and uh, bridges, you know, to have a longer, larger span, as you know. Uh, bridges, I mean, you have so many bridges in the world and um, unfortunately so many accidents that's so important to visualize, to see, okay, can my bridge handle more loads in the future? Can my bridge, you know, extend its life? And that's important, that's, this is important to really know the, the rebar layout within the concrete here. Um, one ex very nice example is uh, retaining walls and all those shear walls, uh, which are so important for the structure. It's you know very difficult to guess what's uh, behind in terms of bottom rebars. And as you know, those bottom rebars can be very important to um, you know for the resistance of the structure. So here, um, GPR solutions, for instance, it's a very good one. Tunnels as well, um, you know that's a classic one. Uh, you need also to image what's inside uh, the thickness and also the rebar layout. So if you focus actually uh, on what I said before, if you want to know the skeleton, you know, what kind of rebars you have and to define your, your structure, you need the GPR technology for sure. Uh, that's today the best technology for that. Um, and our solution can run up to 80 centimeters. In combination of the profometer based on eddy current technology, where you're more shallow, okay, fair enough, up to 18 centimeters, but the precision is really good in terms of, um, you know, estimating the concrete cover and the rebar diameter. And those two solutions are really a good, very good start to, as I said, assess your structure or check it. Let's start with GPR. Um, some of you might not know it, you know, the good to remind you. So if you know radio, radio wave, you know, that's uh, something also used by the army. 
uh, no worries. We we are certified. We don't disturb the armies uh, in the world. So our GPR works, you know, very very uh, simply. You just run scan, and every you know um, rebar metallic object. Metallic objects are very good for GPR because you have 99% of the way the wave bouncing back, you know, to the sensor, so that you have this hyperbola very classic one uh, in the world of GPR experts. Conversely, you know, um, you don't have uh, this in ultrasound. Ultrasound actually is very good for uh, back wall, for air, and also internal defect. So for metallic, you should, you know, uh, use uh, GPR. And for that, we have three different sensors. I will explain to you the difference. Um, and here, I want to really emphasize something. Now today that you have so many drawings, so many reporting, communication channel, um, Karsten said it, we believe in computing power. And the best today is to have a tablet and the iPad, as you see now, the, the computing power of the last iPad is really wonderful. So you need to have access to all your information. And of course, our software is available there to give you uh, the state of the art um, imaging system, you know, um, and, we are happy to, to have that, you know, uh, to bring you this solution because you don't have to go to the office. You really get all information in the field and you can communicate with your colleagues, all the stakeholders uh, directly. In terms of sensors, we have from a small one, uh, GP88, so GP8800 um, to GP8000. Those two are scanning on one line, okay, one line scan. And you have the big one uh, in terms of productivity and terrific imaging because that's immediate, you have six line scans. So you increase your chance to uh, you know, uh, find the object and uh, have a very good image uh, of it. So roughly 25 centimeters uh, width. Of. In terms of frequency, we really simplify that. Uh, our sensor uh, is really wonderful for that. Um, we know that Decades ago, uh, people were really working, and uh, uh, we thank those, uh, uh, you know, this industry progressing in the last years, last century. But it was really based on the frequency. So, if you want to uh, locate a big object very deep, you had to have one gigahertz frequency, and then if you want a small object shallow, you go to two point six, two point six. But we really simplify that with. Um, certifying and very efficient stat frequency continuous wave now today widely used uh, globally by uh, um, our partners are really satisfied with that because you can really without thinking about the frequency from 0 0.2 to 6 gigahertz you start to collect everything all object up to 80 centimeters of course um, conditions can vary in, in some cases but you can go really up to 80 centimeters um, where you can really collect big objects, deep and very small objects in, in the shallow layers. That's really wonderful to get a very clean image of, uh, you know, reinforced concrete. Um, as, as a structure engineer, I'm really, uh, I was really impressed the first time I saw that GPR can really today uh, be more accessible by non-GPR experts like me, uh, because I, I'm engineer, you know, many engineers now, they, they start to like it. Um, our system is ecosystem works uh, Wi-Fi connection. That's really convenient. No cables. Of course, if you're in the restricted area, nuclear plants or uh, very noisy, you can still use a cable. It's fine, but uh, you know, cableless, it's really more comfortable. And our app is free. Uh, if you want to use, you need a sensor for sure, but you can still download the, the app today and um, I invite you if you don't know it, you know, to, to dive into it. It's very intuitive, uh, very um, accessible, and you can play with some demo files if you want. Um, so GPR philosophy is always the same. You start with the really raw data view, what we call those hyperbolas I showed you before. And then you go to migrated view, which is a view which is more common for people because you start to see really well the object. Uh, very convenient for non-expert, you know, GPR expert. And you can go up to the 3D view um, and then close to the real situation, of course. So now if we get back to our piece of concrete, 
So basically you will obtain that in terms of raw data view. And again, today that's the really best solutions for uh, going deep in terms of rebar layout, really visualize uh, to be sure that you can find your bottom rebars and also see uh, all the spacing top rebars. And also PT duct uh, as well, you can see very well. So if you take the, the biggest sensor that we have, uh, six line scans, basically it's very simple. You just have to scan and all, so that's an example of reinforced concrete slab or ground slab where with a mesh, you know, uh, not a mesh, but rebar uh, in both directions. You can really see uh, very well in this plan view actually. Uh, and you can travel, I, I like to say that you can travel within the thickness of, of your piece of concrete and start to see the object, you know, this uh, top down view. Uh, and it's very intuitive, you just have to scan. And in terms of uh, data collection, it's very fast productive. And we have a note again, that's something I really uh, advise for non-GPR experts. You don't have to be an expert with the auto again, the software, we produce the best settings, you know, fine tuned for you so that you can have a very clear pictures of, of your object and you find it. Of course, we have dual view. Uh, if you like to have um, the, line, the classic line scan, so that's a slice of what you have in the thickness. And here, that's the top down view. Uh, we call it time slice view. Um, and you can, of course, uh, as I said, travel within the thickness um, of the concrete. So the software really offers um, in the field, again, all possible views, complementary views, comprehensive views that you really can judge what kind of object that you have. Uh, raw data view, if you like the classic, you know, in terms of hyperbolas to really guess uh, the details. Uh, migrate, migrated data view, the top down view that we call uh, the super lens scan here for the six lines uh, sensors, the dual view, uh, both directions. So that's exactly the, like this one. Here you get all the objects. So here, for instance, you see a drainage, uh, water drainage channel. Um, you have the 3D view. and we propose augmented reality and it's not a gadget, it's really important because we uh, listen to the market and also we are perfectly aware uh, in many, many assets uh, structure, you need to trigger discussion. You need to prove something, to, you need to locate, to show something, to point out. And augmented reality is really uh, a useful um, you know, um, tool for that. And again, in the field, uh, you want to share with someone directly, you want to open a PDF drawing to say, oh, is that the, the rebar that I locate? Yes, let's see the drawing. That's your computer. It's with you, that's your iPad. Now uh, to summarize on the GPR. So as I said, the first one, the GP8800 uh, has an excellent resolution and it's very adapted for small and congested areas and ideal for curved surfaces. Now, if you work in a tunnel, uh, on the long or long returned, returning wall, I strongly suggest the GP8000 um, because it's uh, really ergonomic. In terms of ergonomics, it's ideal for long line scans, um, one kilometer if you want. And um, for really ultimate productivity, also for beginners, uh, because they can, they can have uh, an image directly, I really suggest uh, the GP8100 with six line scans in one scan. Telescopic road, of course, you can use it. Now, for some of you, we can say, you know what? I can estimate the concrete cover as well with my uh, GPR. You know, uh, yes, you're right. Uh, I give you an example here: three point nine centimeters. Um, yes, you're right. In congested areas, uh, even that's the best solution, actually. But, but, you know, we have eddy current technology uh, which exists now for decades. Um, you know, uh, with a lot of certification standards, that's, and I strongly suggest you as, as an engineer, as an engineer, that's the best today solution for uh, concrete cover estimation and diameter, rebar diameter estimation. There is no better solution than that today. And, you know, with many decades, that's uh, something many, many inspectors, contractors knows. Um, so 
that's that's for today uh, the solution uh, very complementary to GPR. So eddy current, how does it work? It's based on the magnetic induction. So we have coils inside uh, the sensor, which will trigger, you know, um, a primary magnetic field. The primary magnetic field will trigger, um, you know, a current inside the rebar, and the rebar will trigger back a secondary uh, magnetic field, which will be, you know, uh, collected by the sensor. And the difference we will estimate uh, all information about the rebar, uh, the location of the rebar, the concrete cover, and the diameter, as I said. So that's something, you know, not, not really difficult to understand here with the magnetic induction technology. You have several uh, standards, not going to details. Um, uh, you have several measuring range, but let's go on what you can do with that. So the profometer, that's the, uh, our device. Um, it's very good for uh, similar to GPR line scan, where you can really estimate the diameters and uh, uh, concrete cover. So in terms of data, you collect and you start to image it. You can have also the top-down view if you want to scan in both direction and then to have this really like a drawing actually uh, when you see your uh, rewards in both direction. And of course that that will be that must be only top rewards. As I said, it's limited to 18 centimeters. Um, um, and it's dropping exponentially, you know, the power of the magnetic field. But you you have an excellent uh, if you're normally you know it's five, six centimeters max with the concrete cover. So that that's really good to have uh, a first layout. The signal strength that's very important. Now I see many non-experts using that um, because the signal strength really will um, validate your inspection uh, by, okay, it's homogeneous. You know, there is no metal detection and abnormal metal, metallic object detection. So uh, that's possible to have it here. And of course you have stats. St statistics are so important here uh, to judge, you know, the state of, of a slab or a wall. Uh, especially for a bridge or a, a parking slab. An example of a column, you know, uh, columns are really important. Uh, if, we, if we go to Champlain, uh, Miami uh, Towers or any uh, office building, especially in those uh, areas, uh, coastal cities where you have corrosion issues, that's really good to uh, check the concrete cover. And of course, the rebar location, indirectly you check it. So unlike GPR for uh, eddy current technology profometer that's very important to be on the midpoint line. So you normally should first locate and make sure that your sensor is aligned on the midpoint line. Why? Because if you're up or down, you will be disturbed by two layers of rebars. You need to be on the clean path to really detect the rebar here perpendicular to the uh, line scan. And then you start to obtain, you know, um, your uh, image, you know, layout, as I said before, on both directions in this column example. Now, in a, imagine that you have big surface. Um, we also, uh, you know, uh, offer the heat map. It's really cool. Uh, why? When you talk with an asset owner or an uh, engineering firm, that's an excellent tool, um, you know, to calculate the repair budget with the red cell. Let's assume that every um, red cell has a concrete cover below 20 millimeters. As an example, of course, you set the threshold by yourself. You can really estimate after the, the repair budget and then engage with asset owners, engineers, how you, or contractors to repair that. That's a really uh, cool here, useful uh, feature. So back to, to, sum, to summarize here, um, really process GPR profometer using GPR and eddy current technologies are really complementary because one is really good to image really deep, you know, to give you a first, you know, very good uh, layout, but you will never get the precision on, on the shallow level, like the concrete cover, all the diameter estimation, and you need to use the, the profometer for that. So both are really uh, complementary. 
Now, if you want to talk to us, you, um, I think you will receive now um, after the webinar a link, if you want to engage with us. Uh, we have also, uh, as Carton said, many headquarters uh, around the world. Um, we like to talk with you, so don't hesitate to contact us. Yep, Karsten, you want to start maybe the no, questions? I think that's that was that was fantastic so we don't have uh nobody has typed up any questions so uh that i, I can one, see so have far one question have one question yeah. Carsten. yes one one someone is asking about the uh the pipes and the conduits you know if you can yes yes you can use the gpr for that you can use prospect gpr as well i i was focusing on the metallic object or like the rebars but of course uh the gpr is a perfect tool to detect any object okay uh, so, as I said, PT duct, uh, live live wire, or any pipes will be detected, of course, and that's a good also inf piece of information for the concrete. But structurally speaking, yes, uh, you, if you focus mono rebars, that was the pitch that I presented before. Yeah. Uh, in a previous webinar, we had a questions like, uh, do you need to buy both at at the same time? Uh, how, how do you see that, Hussam? I strongly recommend uh, if your contractor or inspector, um, also engineered firms, you must have both uh, for the reasons that I developed before, because you really have the complementary view. Uh, if not, you will lose a piece of information. So of course we can offer both. Uh, if you contact us, uh, we can uh, arrange that without problem. Uh, another question we had was, how easy is it to uh, upgrade from one to the next? Meaning, let's say if I already have a profometer or a profoscope, how do I, uh, will it be easy for me if I get a GP for me to continue doing my work? Um, if you have already a GP, uh, of course, you, I mean, you can run it, uh, no problem. Um, but you can, of course, approach us, we can discuss, um, you know the, the conditions if you're interested for a for a eddy current profometer system yeah device uh, that's something okay. and of course uh the other side around uh if you have a profometer then you're limited to 18 centimeters okay very precise but you you miss and as i said in tunnels returning wall you miss all uh all information behind uh you must have a GP, uh, GPR device. And uh, I showed you the different use case. Uh, you can have the, the small one, GP 1800, if you're more in congested areas buildings. And if you really want to have more uh, data and have a very easy tool, you can go up to GP 1100 if you want. But I would say today, uh, GPR technology, should be now, uh, we democratize that uh, the last three years at Screen Eagle Technologies. Now we see many people, you know, not being a PhD uh, in GPR and they use it fantastically. I mean, uh, and also our GPR experts still uh, like, you know, uh, using our devices because, you know, if you want to go, you disactivate the automatic uh, support, you know, that we have, you can go deeper and, and uh, you can play with the data. Data always clean and you can manage it. Yeah. Excellent. Any other questions? All right, everyone. Thank you so much for attending.